Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the trading week ending Friday the 13th of March and I'm recording again from Panama City. The week has ended with a bounce and I expect that bounce is going to continue next week and I've got two targets for it to end, 2828 or 3044. However, Lowry's preliminary data suggests Friday might have been a 90% upward day but I need to look at the OCO data and I won't have that until Monday. If Friday was a 90% upward day that may indicate a sustainable low in place and there may be a V bottom and the resumption of the bull market that would change the analysis but for the short term at least I will be expecting upward movement to continue at least early next week. For the main wave count, if Friday is not a full 90% upward day, we may be moving into a B wave. It's most likely a sideways consolidation to last several days, maybe even a couple of weeks. And when it's done, the bear market may resume to a final low at 2352, but that target may change. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. I'm going to go over monthly charts so that members have this in video format as well. I think that's important for those of you who prefer video. Stepping back and looking at the entirety of this bull market, this is March 2009, the end of the global financial crisis and the start of this bull market, which has lasted over, ten, over a decade. I'm labelling this a complete five wave impulse and I'm expecting that this could be a cycle degree first wave. I'm labelling it with a long extended first wave at primary degree, a double combination for primary 2, a shorter primary 3, a double zigzag for primary 4 and a shorter still primary 5. When I put 1, 2, 3 and 4 in those positions I then use Elliott's first technique to draw a channel around this movement from 1 to 3 and then a parallel copy on the end of 2. When we do that it perfectly shows where 4 found support, 5 has a small overshoot and the middle of the third wave has a reasonable overshoot. This is the strongest portion and when it overshoots the channel drawn in this way it adds confidence the channel is drawn correctly and so that adds a little confidence that this channel is correct which tells me that 1, 2, 3 and 4 may well be in the correct positions. When we get to the next chart you'll see that I'm labelling primary wave 4 as in multiple WXY. I've taken the labels off this monthly chart because it's just getting too squished up with them there. There is alternation here though between the combination of primary 2 and a double zigzag of primary 4 although they are labelled the same way WXY. There are two broad categories of Elliott wave corrective structures. There is the zigzag family and in classic technical analysis terms we describe those as sharp bounces or pullbacks, they're sharp movements. And then there's the sideways consolidating family, Elliott wave combinations, triangles and flat corrections. Multiple zigzags, single, sorry, double and triple zigzags are labelled with the letters W, X, Y and if there is one, X, Z. Combinations, doubles and triples, are labelled also with the letters W, X, Y and if there is one, X, Z. And so they're labelled the same but they belong to the two different groups of Elliott Wave corrective structures. So there is alternation here between a combination of two and a multiple zigzag of four. Downward movement closed strongly below the lower edge of this channel on Thursday with very strong downward movement and that's prompted me to relabel my, my monthly wave count and consider that this bear market, and it meets the definition of a bear market, it's a 27% fall in price from high to low at the close, not the low, just the close, that this bear market may be a second wave correction. I have two targets for it and I favour the more shallow target at the 0 0.382 Fibonacci ratio of cycle wave 1 at 2352 but if price were to fall through that target the next lower target would be the 0 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of cycle 1. Cycle 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below the invalidation point. Let's take a look at this at the weekly chart level now. We're going to go from the high of primary 3 
which is this point here. Here's the double zigzag of primary four. An impulse of primary five, it doesn't have good, or it doesn't have perfect uh, proportion between intermediate four, intermediate two, and minor four, and minor two, but it does fit as a five wave impulse. This very strong downward movement does fit the idea of a second wave. They are often quite strong, even if they're not always deep. Cycle wave 2 may be continuing lower. However, if we see Friday's session a full 90% upward day, when I have data for that, I may label cycle wave 2 over at this low. I'll know on Monday when we have that data. For now, let's expect it quite likely to continue lower to the first target which would be favoured. When cycle 2 is over, then a third wave would be expected to begin and that may exhibit an increase in strength beyond the first wave. Let's take a look at the daily chart level now. We're going to look from the end of cycle 1, which is this point here. From this high to this low, it's possible to see a five wave impulse. This could also be seen as a multiple zigzag though, and it looks like a multiple zigzag at the daily chart level. So again, if Friday counts as a full 90% upward day, when I have Lowry's OCO, that's operating company's only data, I may label cycle wave two over here and call for a sustainable low in place. But for now, let's consider the possibility that cycle two is not over. I do expect there's enough bullishness at the end of the week in this upward movement and extreme oversold conditions to now expect some respite from extreme conditions and expect a B wave may have begun on Friday. Primary wave A will subdivide very well at the hourly chart level as an impulse, one, two, three, four, five. It's not best viewed at the daily chart level, but the subdivisions are quite clear at the hourly chart level. So that's how I'm going to label it. If primary A is a five wave impulse, then primary B may not move beyond its start above the invalidation point. And I've given you the two Fibonacci ratios to use as targets for primary B, the 0.382 and 0.618 targets. They're in the text article, they're up in the summary. When primary wave B may be complete, then I will apply a Fibonacci ratio between A and C to calculate a target again for cycle 2. At that stage, this target may change or it may widen to a small zone. Considering the strength and velocity of this downward movement, we may see some alternation between a strong A and a weak B. Primary wave B might most likely be one of the sideways consolidating Elliott wave corrective structures, most likely a flat triangle or combination. It could also be a quick sharp zigzag, but I think some sideways movement would better relieve extreme conditions. That would make sense. At the hourly chart level, I'm labeling this as a five wave impulse and the subdivisions all fit very well indeed. One, two, three is an impulse, four is more brief and shallow than its counterpart two, that's okay. When this particular market has strong bearish movement, it can behave in a manner similar to commodities, and that's typical commodity-like behavior. And a short little fifth wave. There's an extended first wave, there's an extended third wave. Only two of three actionary waves may extend, and so a short little fifth wave here absolutely fits expectations and meets all Elliott wave rules. Downward movement perfectly bounced up off this lower edge of the Elliott channel. I've drawn this channel from one to three with a parallel copy on two. At the hourly chart level, this wave count considers primary wave B moving into a sideways consolidation with intermediate A to subdivide most likely as a zigzag and so minor A most likely as a five wave impulse. So intermediate A, a zigzag, may unfold five, three, five at minor degree. Targets for primary B are either the 0.382 or 0.618 Fibonacci ratios, and I favor neither. A new high above this price point would add confidence that primary A would be incomplete and primary B may be underway. A new high above this point would indicate that cycle wave two may most likely be over. But let's also consider Friday's data. If it was a 90% up day and coming after six 90% down days in this downward movement, 
a 90% up day indicates a 180 degree shift in sentiment and a sustainable low likely in place. We don't have that data yet though sadly. At the monthly chart level, this is an alternate wave count. It's very bullish. It doesn't have as good a channel and it doesn't have as much support from technical analysis. And it also has this breach of the channel, which doesn't have as good a look as the main monthly count. I'm still seeing an extended first wave here, but I'm labelling it cycle one, so I've moved the degree of labelling here up one. I'm still seeing this as a double combination for a second wave, but here it's cycle degree. And then instead of a third, fourth and fifth wave, what if we've got a series of overlapping first and second waves? Intermediate 2 may not move beyond the start of intermediate 1, the invalidation point's fairly close by. A target for cycle 3, it's past 1.618 the length of cycle 1, the next target is for it to reach 2.618 the length of cycle wave 1. This wave count expects a third wave at three large degrees intermediate primary and cycle. It expects a strong increase in upward momentum in coming months. This acceleration channel is drawn from the end of cycle one to the last high with a copy placed on the end of cycle two. When cycle three would be complete as the channel is redrawn as price moved higher, if this wave count's correct, then that channel would then be drawn using Elliott's first technique. And so it could still yet prove to be a correctly drawn channel looking as good as that first channel on that first monthly chart. Classic technical analysis now. This week another strong downward week but a very long bullish long lower wick. A strong increase in volume could be a selling climax this week. On balance volume is at weak support. I've drawn this trend line very conservatively, very carefully. If I make it slightly less, slightly more shallow, it could possibly be broken, but that's not conservative enough, so I'm drawing it from this little swing low to just touch this little swing low. On balance volume may be at weak support that could possibly help to stop falling price here. At the weekly chart level, RSI is very close to, but not yet oversold. There is a little bit of room for price to continue falling. ADX is indicating at the weekly chart level there is a downward trend in place, MACD is full ball bearish and as normal for this market ATR shows a strong increase when this market has strong downward moves. At the daily chart level there are six 90% down days in this downward movement, one, two, three, four, five and six for Thursday. Friday might be a 90% upward day and if it is I would then call for a V bottom and a sustainable low in place and we'll have that data on Monday. For now it's suggested but it's not sure from Lowry's data and so I don't want to make that call until I have accurate data to do so. There is though a long bullish wick for Friday session and it did close this last gap which is now renamed an exhaustion gap. That with still fairly heavy volume suggests and possibly a 90% downward day at least a pretty sorry upward day at least a pretty strong upward day that all suggests that we have at least an interim low if not possibly a sustainable low. When an exhaustion gap is closed I'll then be expecting a bounce or some consolidation or a, a trend change. ADX indicates a downward trend which is now extreme. The black ADX line has moved above just both directional lines but it hasn't reached 45 yet so the trend is not very extreme but it is now extreme. ATR as is normal for this market when it has bearish moves increases. On balance volume is not falling as fast as price there. There's some sustained bullish divergence here between price and on balance volume. These lows from price are not matched by lows and on balance volume, supporting the view that this bear market, as spectacular as it has been, may end sooner rather than later. There's also bullish divergence after RSI reached fairly deeply oversold, and that is often, but not always, an indication of a more sustainable low in place. MACD remains full ball bearish 
and stochastics oversold also has bullish divergence. Looking at the AD line as a measure of market breadth, this is the weekly chart. We can see here's that dramatic fall in price that we've seen for the last three to four weeks. And yet the AD line is not falling nearly as fast. What that tells us is this downward movement, even though it's been quite dramatic and strong, does not have support from a corresponding decline in market breadth. Market breadth remains relatively elevated. And so this is bullish divergence, and I will give this reasonable weight in the analysis. At the daily chart level, there was shorter term bullish divergence. It's now simply disappeared, and this is a warning. We have to go with the data we have in hand. At the moment, at the weekly chart level, there is fairly strong and clear bullish divergence between price and the AD line. However, there was fairly strong and clear bullish divergence between price and the AD line for the shorter term at the daily chart level. It's now simply disappeared as prices continue to fall on Thursday or Wednesday and Thursday of the last week. Sometimes that divergence simply disappears. It will more often than not indicate the next move, sometimes earlier rather than later, but it's not absolutely certain. There's nothing in classic technical analysis or Elliott Wave or any of it that is absolutely certain. We are dealing with a balance of probabilities, not certainties. And so for the short term, there is now no bullish divergence between price and the AD line. Now looking at inverted VIX as a measure of market volatility. Inverted VIX is falling faster than price is falling. Price has not made new lows yet below this prior low of December 2018. Yet inverted VIX has made new lows below that prior very important major swing low. The fall in price comes with a stronger increase in volatility. And so this divergence is bearish. It does not agree with the divergence, which is bullish with the AD line. However, inverted VIX has had bearish divergence between price highs and inverted VIX for over two years. That may now be resolved by this very strong bear downward movement, which technically meets the definition of a bear market now. It's over a 20% fall in market value from high to close. And it was preceded by over two years of bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. Very clearly, as I've been saying for months now, it's hopeless as a timing tool. It was a really early warning. It's impossible to say once you've got a few months or a year or two exactly when you're going to see the bearish move that may resolve it. It may now be resolved or it may not. And this new divergence between lows may be indicating that the bear market may not be over and it may continue lower, as my main count wave count suggests. I would have confidence in that if we didn't have a 90% upward day and if the AD line agreed with it, but the AD line disagrees and Lowry's data, when I have that on Monday, might disagree. And if that's the case, I will give less weight to inverted VIX. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.